Hey, howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I record all my lectures and put them online and hope that I will support working professionals, the students in my classes, and maybe folks just interested in going to college, right? All right, so let's jump into this. Now, a challenge as a professor is to always find, or try to find, I should say, examples, demonstrations that are catchy, kind of fun, kind of entertaining. And to, I have to admit, to celebrate a little bit because I finished marking my final exams, submitted my grades, and I'm all pumped about the summer and a lot of stuff I have to do. I thought I'd take a little time on the weekend I'd write a fun app. Okay, here it is. I want to demonstrate the idea of an interactive tool which uses images and suggest the idea that this can be very, very powerful for the purpose of communication. Now, often we'll generate our own images through some type of a the data set. We'll go ahead and we'll run statistics. We'll make maps and so forth. Therefore, the images are really an input or an output in some step of a workflow. But sometimes there's going to be cases when we don't necessarily have the information as a mesh of values. We want to actually literally work with an like image. I mean like a JPEG. And we want to communicate using that image. And so for a challenge, I'd never done it before. I thought, why not try to do that? Now, a good example for me, since I just replaced the wheels and tires on my Jeep, was why don't I demonstrate how I calculate it, the look, the fit, the you know overall performance of the wheels before I bought them. All right, so I developed this for fun. Okay, so this is an interactive workflow. It's going to take images of my Jeep and it's going to allow you to be able to change any one of the wheel tire parameters and be able to visualize the impact on the ultimate look of the vehicle and how it would potentially if there might be any issues around fit or legal requirements in some states you might be concerned even about the wheels being outside the fenders now i should state this application is an approximation it was made for fun it's uh, really for aesthetics kind of a first pass screening someone could use please do not use this to make any big decisions there's no guarantees of the results blah 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 okay so wheel and tire parameters well Every time we worked on the Jeep as a family, we learned something new and replacing the wheels taught us a bunch of new things. And that is there's a whole bunch of different parameters. There's wheel diameter, wheel width, and wheel offset. So remember, the wheel is the rim. It's the part that holds, that the rubber is attached to, the tires attached to the wheel. Diameter is just measured across, that literally the diameter of the circle of the wheel and there's a lot of details about you know does it include the lip and so forth i won't get into that it's just let me leave it as diameter the wheel width would be if you imagine the wheel as a cylinder it would be the height of the cylinder and once again there's details about whether or not what lip or what part where you start measuring but we'll just leave it as that's wheel width the wheel offset a little bit more complicated if you imagine that it's the distance from the midpoint, you could imagine that the wheel, you know, being circular like this, I could take the midpoint section halfway between the, in between the roadside and the inside of the wheel towards the body of the car, that point right there. And then you could measure the difference between the mount, where it mounts onto the vehicle versus where you are relative to that midpoint. And if you have a positive number, it indicates that the wheels are kind of pulled under the vehicle body. And if you have a negative value, it means the wheels are pushed out from underneath the body of the vehicle. Now, to try to visualize this, have you ever been on the road and you've seen a vehicle where the wheels are sticking out? Like they're actually outside the fender or outside the under, they're not underneath the completely underneath the vehicle body itself, that would suggest an extreme negative offset. Okay, good. Tire width, the fattest part of the tire in cross-section. 
The tire aspect ratio is the height to the width ratio. So a small number here would result in those, you know, those low profile tires where they have very little height, but they're really wide. That would have very low value. While something that's more like a, looks like a bicycle wheel, kind of like really high, but really narrow, that would be a very large number. Okay, and, and typically they'll go between 55 to 85 or so, okay. The lift, now that's a modification on the vehicle itself. Components of the suspension are either modified or replaced to increase the clearance between the wheel and the body of the vehicle. It's pulled away from each other to create more ground clearance for the vehicle. OE, original equipment on a Jeep would be zero inch lift. That's the way it's sold. And common lifts would be one to about four inches. Okay, so now you know the basics of wheel parameters and what we're going to play with right now. Now, there's a lot more information available. I put a link here, but there's tons of websites where they sell wheels and they talk about all of these parameters. There's videos on YouTube where people demonstrate this. Okay, so the objective is I want to show you a demonstration to of this idea of interactive images to communicate something complicated, which if you think about all those wheel parameters and what exactly that does for the wheel fit or aesthetic, is a little bit complicated. So let's go ahead and do this. So the first thing, like always, we leverage the world's brilliance. So let's go ahead and load the required libraries. We'll use OS so that we can set a current working directory, specifically where our images are. We're gonna use matplotlib because you'll see when we actually plot the image, we'll use that. It's fast, it reduces the resolution. But if you actually try to visualize the image in high resolution, run this app, it doesn't work. It just, it actually doesn't ever run. It'll just hang. So we use matplotlib because it'll give us a reduced resolution image that we can practically visualize in the app. We're gonna use the grid spec module within the matplotlib package because it'll allow us to control the size of individual images and subplots. And you'll see we'll need that. PIL, we're gonna use that in order to modify images. We'll load images as an image and then we'll do image draw so we can draw on the image. We'll convert it from image to image draw and then we'll be able to draw on it with our shape of our tires, okay? And then we have high iPi widgets where we'll load up a bunch of different widgets that we wanna work with. We'll have layouts that we'll use and so forth. All right, and I'll show that to you. All right. So next, we're gonna set our working directory. You're going to want to download my images to this working directory, whatever directory you wanna work with. I'm working directly with my D drive and the name of my course and machine learning. Then you're going to download these images. Now these images, there's a link here to my GitHub account where I've actually put these images. Now, next we're going to build up our dashboard. Now the code below, what it's gonna do is we're gonna make a bunch of widgets now we put a lot, of, I put a lot of effort into getting layouts so it looked pretty good. So you'll see there's a bunch of specific numbers on layouts, widths and heights all over the place. I did this to try to get a pretty good look for my dashboard. It's static, I haven't made it really fancy or anything like that, but I just wanted to have a reasonable thing we could work with. I use a bunch of radio buttons. I do that on purpose because we're modifying an image and that's a bit heavy, I did not want to use slider bars. If you use a slider bar, as you move the slider bar, it will keep trying to update and that will just go on forever. You'll find you create a lot of lag. If you played with my interactive simulation program, that had the same problem. Whereas I changed the Veragram parameters, the simulation kept regenerating, and it would just take a long time. Radio buttons are good because you just push the number and then it updates the image. Okay, so we got the wheel diameter in inches, the wheel width in inches, the wheel offset in millimeters. Now don't ask me why, but in wheels and tires, they switch between Imperial and the metric system. Then we have the tire width in millimeters, the ratio of height to width of the cross section of the tire, the lift. Okay, so these are all of our parameters. 
Then we're going to have a variety of different V boxes, vertical boxes and horizontal boxes so that we can group our widgets together. And you'll see it's actually kind of pretty. It worked out pretty well. Now I'm thinking right now, I can't remember if I ran anything. I've just been having so much fun talking. Let's make sure we've run the code. I make that mistake every time. So we've run everything up until then. We'll come back down here. Now, after we have formatted our dashboard, all of these V boxes and H boxes, we're now able to go ahead and say, let's create a function and this function, we can pass the widget information to the function. Now, the function will first of all write out, it'll tell you what is the specification of your current configuration. Then it's gonna do a bunch of calculations. First calculations are all based on the default configuration from the image. And that's the specific information about the tires and the wheels in the image and the locations of those things. It uses that to say, okay, now if this wheel was an 18 inch wheel and I want to increase it by one inch to a 19 inch wheel in diameter, how many pixels or how big in pixel space in the image would I have to increase that circle? So it does all that math right here. Now, if you're wondering how I did that, I figured out the size of landmarks on my Jeep and then I went to the image and I figured out how many pixels there. So I did an approximation. So this is all approximative, but it's pretty close. It should look pretty good. Well, so we'll figure out from the defaults, how much would we have to change and our knowledge about the size of the image or distance in the image, how much would we have to move things around, expand things such that we could modify the wheels, change their positions, change their offsets and so forth. We're going to do that for a view looking from the side. And we're also going to do that for a view looking from the rear of the vehicle. And then when we're done, we'll do a couple of things here where we'll just try to put some red outlines around the modifications to kind of make it stand out more. Now you'll see it's not perfect, but it works pretty well. Once we're done with this function where we've modified the image, we can then at the very end, we'll do a little bit of formatting right here where we're going to set the size of the images so that they look nice. They, they fit together nicely in the output and you'll see it works pretty good. Then all we have to do is use from IPy widgets, the widgets.interactive output and tell it that this function is linked with all of these outputs from the widgets. Now, once we've done that, then when we run this, we've now created our dashboard. Now, okay, so that's, that's just run. Now to visualize our dashboard and see it, we just have to run this command right here. Okay, so now we've done it. We've run the command and we now have our interactive dashboard. So Jeep wheel tire, tire fit interactive Python. Yeah, uh, just for the record, you know I'm a professor in engineering and geosciences, not a professor in tires and wheels, just to be clear about this, but and I'm not an expert in this, but I thought this was really fun. Okay, so now before we look at the image, let me set the configuration to be the same as what the image is showing, the current wheels and tires. So currently I have 18 by 8.5 by 18 millimeter offset, a ratio on the tires of 75, the width of the tires are 255s and I have zero lift on my Jeep. My Jeep, you'll see my racks are so tall. If I lift, I in fact will not fit my garage and I will not fit in the garage at the University of Texas at Austin. I kind of almost, I kind of, okay, so let's go ahead and visualize that. Okay, so we ran our interactive display and it tells us you have 255 slash 75 R18 tires. Okay, so just from this information, it gets that on 18 by 8.5 wheels, and they have offset of 18 millimeters, and I have zero suspension lift. Now, if you look really carefully, you'll notice there's a little bit of the wheels just maybe turned a little bit, so you can see a little bit kind of more tread on this side, and maybe right here, it's just kind of a perspective thing. But those circles, though the white circle is the tire, and if you look carefully, you'll see that this semi-transparent region is the wheel. And if you look at the rear view, this is exactly where the tire is relative to the vehicle. So you get a sense of how it fits on the vehicle.
So let's go ahead and make some modifications and see what would happen. Now, let's say for my birthday next year, I go to my, my family and I say, hey, I think I should get a lift on my Jeep for my birthday. I wouldn't do that. It wouldn't fit in the garage and say, I want a four inch lift on my Jeep. So this is what would happen to the wheels. Well, four inch lift. Now you're seeing that the wheel, the top of the wheel is about at the just below kind of the top of the bumper right here. You can see right there. So it started to drop the wheel. You can see everything is shifted down. Okay, so that's what would happen if I got a four inch. You could imagine even a six inch lift, which would be really crazy. Now look at the clearance of that Jeep. That's amazing. Now I can just run over everything. I could go off roading anywhere I wanted to. And then maybe I say at that point, I want to get some 20 inch wheels because that would just look awesome. And so now you can see the wheels are bigger even now. And I've got 20 inch wheels. And then I said, well, but I kind of, I want to get something that's more rubber. So I say, I want the ratio to be maybe, uh, I'll make them 95. So now they're 95%. The height of the cross section is 95% of the width. So now look at this. Now I have even more rubber there because I have a higher ratio of height to width on the cross section. So my wheels are getting even bigger and bigger. I could say, well, I need to work with even bigger wheels. So I'm going to increase the size of my rims of my wheels to the width of the wheels. The height of the cylinder of the wheel is now nine inch. And I'm going to say that I need to work with a cross section of 285 millimeters. Now, if you look really carefully, you can see now I have really wide wheel, and you can see that in cross section right there. Okay. And then finally, something I haven't shown you yet, but I currently have an 18 millimeter offset. What would happen if I did something really aggressive and got a negative 12 millimeter offset? Now, do you see the wheels are now sticking out from the body? I now have, now if I take it all the way to a negative 40 millimeter offset, look at that. Now I've got wheels that are exceeding the body quite a bit. Okay. So this would be an example of a pretty extreme off-road configuration. Now I could say, well, maybe I want to go more kind of like uh, kind of a strange configuration on a Jeep. I could say, well, let me drop the vehicle down and let me go ahead and decrease, use very small wheels. And I'm going to use a very small ratio. So I got narrow wheels with a small ratio. Look at that 20 inch diameter wheels and my tires are very, very tiny now. And so now you could imagine I'm greatly dropping the clearance of the vehicle. The vehicle is starting to become pretty small. I could even drop the diameter of those wheels and look at that. They're really getting tiny. In fact, starting to kind of look like the original wheels that they put on those um, sport models, the really tiny ones. I think they're 16 inch. Okay. I hope that this was, oh, let me just go ahead. And since I'm kind of making it really kind of casual, I could go ahead and set the offset at 44 millimeters. And now the wheels are tucked way in underneath the vehicle at the same time. So this was a demonstration of using Python to interact with images to create a dashboard to communicate a concept. In this case, the fit of tires and wheels. The code is all available to you. It's all my GitHub account. So if anybody wants to try this out, to try it out on different types of images and try to communicate, because let's face it, a lot of data science is about building tools for communicating complicated ideas, i.e. our models. And in this case, the model is the interaction of all of the wheel and tire parameters with the ultimate result as far as the aesthetic, the look and the fit of the wheels and tires with the vehicle. All right, that's it. As always, I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I share all of my lectures to try to support my students and support working professionals. I'm always happy to discuss and I hope everybody stays safe. Okay, bye.